What's cooking good looking? As promised, I'm here to show you how I'm putting together my Thai coconut curry mussels. So, mussels are alive when you buy them. You're gonna store them in the refrigerator with a wet towel over the mussels so they can breathe. Um, and you wanna make sure they're nice and clean you want to remove any beards that you find. I just want to show you, so I saved one, and here's the beard, and I just take it with my thumb and forefinger and pull it off. Um, if you find any mussels that have the shells that are cracked, just toss them. And if after you cook them, you find one or two that don't open all the way, toss those as well. Those were not meant to be. So this took about three or four washings, rinsed it, get out any sand or debris, and uh, these are fantastic. They're cheap eats, they're low in fat, high in zinc, B12. They're just all around a great mollusk. This is known as a bivalve and uh, don't shy away from trying them. So let's put it together. So I'm using, of course, a neutral oil, in this case, canola. You don't wanna use olive oil in Asian cooking, that's just my opinion. And I'm cooking with gas, as you can see. I already have my aromatics already prepped. I have here shallot, ginger, garlic, the holy trinity, right? And here I have a smashed piece of lemongrass that I will remove once everything cooks because lemongrass is so fibrous, even if you mince the heck out of it, it's still very hard to chew through. So I just use this for flavor. This is a high heat spatula, but you can use a spoon, of course. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just saute these for about a minute, and then I will cook my curry paste. So this is Thai red curry paste. It's a raw product, just like tomato paste. You wanna caramelize this. You wanna cook this down a little bit, because this is loaded with shallot, ginger, chilies, shrimp paste, um, lemongrass, you name it and of course red chilies which gives it the um, heat and this has plenty of heat so you want to gauge um, what your tolerance and what your guests tolerance is for heat because you can always add chili sauce at the table but you don't want to take it too too far so now that this is sauteed just another 30 seconds i'll go ahead and add just a drop more oil and a little bit of the curry paste and then the coconut cream of unshaken coconut milk. I love chow ko. You can see how incredibly thick and rich this is. This is an unshaken can. That's what you're going for. All right, now we're gonna go and add the curry paste along with Now I'm averting my face because this will make me cough every time. <laughs> it's quite potent. So when I, this is cooking down now, so when I add my remaining coconut milk, you'll see the little droplets of chili oil that float to the top. That's when you know you've cooked it down enough. So now we'll go ahead. I want to get everything out of the can. Coconut milk is incredible. It's also pretty perishable. So if you're storing any leftovers made with coconut milk, you'll get about three days in the refrigerator, after which time, <coughs> oh boy, I can taste those chilies in my throat. But I was saying, after three days, you wanna toss 
or consume the leftovers because that's all you're going to get out of it. All right. So I'm also going to add a little bit of light brown sugar and a little fish sauce. We got a nice heat going. I'm going to add my mussels. Now, I'm going to get a lid. These are not going to take long to cook. Oftentimes, when you order mussels in restaurants, they let them sit on the stove too long after they've cooked, and you end up with these teeny tiny little morsels. But you want a nice, plump mussel. That's what you're looking for. I like to use a glass lid so I can see what's happening inside the pan. Now, you can prepare mussels so many different ways. I mean, it's endless. You can do them uh, just like every red sauce Italian restaurant where they make them with marinara sauce. You could add red wine, white wine. You can do them Spanish style with some chorizo. Uh, roasted red peppers, also red wine or white wine, a million different ways, honestly. Um, the whole idea is to not overcook the mussels, like I said, just when they start to open. In fact, if you take off the lid and you check to see if they're done or not, if you have a few that are done, remove those so they don't continue to overcook and just take them out. Um, as they start opening up. And this is already, I don't know if you can see it, but this is already boiling nicely. And I will go ahead and give this a stir in a second. To the finished dish, I'm going to add chopped cilantro. I already have that. I'm also serving it with lime wedges. And I always have a discard bowl to get rid of the shells. Let me get rid of this. Okay, so let's go ahead and give a peek. See what's happening in here. Wow, we whoa, look at this. Already starting to open nicely. It won't be much longer. Look at that, look at that. Can you see? There we go. Two more minutes and they will be done. Like I said, you're going to hit it with the cilantro at the very end, serve it with lime wedges. I already made my Thai green mango salad with that incredible dressing. Um, I'm going to see if I can retrieve the video that I made. For some reason it did not upload, but it's a great video with an incredible salad dressing. All right, we are done. How long was that? What, three minutes tops? Wow. All right, time to serve. I'm gonna taste this one last time just to make sure the broth is properly seasoned. Hit it with my, I think I'm gonna serve it right out of the wok actually, instead of transferring it it's just the two of us tonight. All right, and that is it. Thai red coconut curry mussels. Bon appetit, everybody.